Welcome to Bible at Home, a devotional and educational offering of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Bismarck, North Dakota. This week following Sunday, March 20th, we are looking at the lost sheep, coin, and son from Luke chapter 15. So um, one of those things just to keep in mind, uh, what is it that, where have you seen God recently in this uh, crazy, crazy world of ours? Um, I'm going to go a little fast because uh, we've got a whole chapter we need to go through today. So things to keep in mind. What is God doing in this story, in this chapter? And what is Jesus trying to tell us? Uh, what part are humans doing? What surprises, unsettles, or comforts you? And what questions might you have? So let's get on with on with this. There's three different stories here. So let's... Um, Take each story um, as it comes. Now, all of the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. So here's story number one. A shepherd, one sheep. What is the, you know, what is the... Significance one versus ninety nine. Uh, the greater, you know, which is the greater good? Which was, but he says here, there's going to be more celebrating, because one sheep is found or one person repents than if ninety nine righteous people, who need no repentance. You know, um, kind of. I think we have a tendency nowadays to think that. Um, yeah, that we are the reference point, that we don't need to repent, it's everybody else. But then again, you know, it's, uh, who are we using as the reference? Who is the shepherd that we are using? So let's let's just take another story here and see uh, uh, see a different twist on it. Or what woman, having 10 silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. When she finds it, she calls together her friends and neighbors saying, rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. So here we're getting into this repentance again. Um, who is uh, who is worthy of repentance? What is the result? Um, you know, notice Jesus is not so concerned about um, the the result, well, the result of the, the the repentance is this celebration. It's how it affects others, um, and indirectly, perhaps how it affects the person. So, one more though, one more story that's a little, a little longer, a little more detailed, a little more to heart. Then Jesus said, "There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, 'Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me.'" So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the young son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in desolate living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took, what took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough to spare? And here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set out and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to the father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. 
But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost, but is found. Just let's stop at that. The, the one son, the younger son, would inherit a third of the property. Uh, the older son would inherit two-thirds. The older son always got an extra, an extra share. But this story of, you know, basically the kid is saying, Dad, I wish you were dead so I could have all your money. He finds out that it's not the money that is, um, you know, it's, it's fun for a while, but then what happens when the money runs out? It's the people you have to depend upon. And nobody knew him, so he had to depend. Um, you know, he'd rather, he would have eaten the trash, the garbage that was being fed to the pigs, look better than starving. And notice what he does when, he's, when he repents, when he turns back to go to the Father and confesses, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. So he, he confesses what he has done and where he feels he is at. But his father is so happy that he has had the son reconciled and restored to him that he has a celebration. But not everybody is going to be happy here. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing he called one of the slaves and asked what was going on he replied your brother has come and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has got him back safe and sound then he the older brother became angry and refused to go in his father came out and began to plead with him but he answered his father listen for all these years i've been working like a slave for you and i have never disobeyed your command yet you have never given me a young goat even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours comes back who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you, you kill the fattened calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we have to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. So we get the father's perspective there that his his son who he thought he had lost thought he was dead has come back in acts when we get to the book of acts um, often we see incidences where people become followers of jesus and they're invited into this new family because literally their families of origin would would say they are dead to them, would turn their backs, would deny they existed. So here is uh, Luke giving us an example of how God feels about when we come back to God, when we come back to the family. He's not going to judge us. He's going to accept us. But our siblings, as siblings, we need to celebrate also and you know the fact we i know we can all see the older brother you know they've he's done the right thing why should why is he thinking that he's being punished or that he's he's suffering but rather than rejoice with the fact that his younger brother has been restored um you know what's easier to do what's harder to do <laughs> uh doing the right thing or um, going off and doing your own way and coming back. Um, it's always that, would you rather have to ask for forgiveness because of what you've done, the sin of commission, or would you, do you want to have to ask about the sin of omission, what you haven't done? Um, always a question all of us have to deal with. So, um, and we have a tendency that we, this, um, this notice we called this the lost son. This story uh, often gets called the prodigal son. But uh, one year I looked up, what does prodigal mean? Notice we never saw prodigal on here. Prodigal means wasteful. So I ask you, who 
is wasteful in this story? Is it the younger son who squanders the uh, inheritance? Is it the father who squanders his love on the younger son? Is it his, the older brother who will not forgive and welcome back the son, the brother? Just something for you to think about. Let us pray. Rejoicing Father, you celebrate when one of your lost children is found because no one is worthless to you. We stand humbled and in awe that you would count us among your most prized possessions. Give us eyes to see the priceless value of every living soul for the sake of the one who became human for the sake of our souls. Jesus Christ, our seeker. Amen. And for our blessing, God finds me. God will find us wherever we are at. And uh, the balance question for you this week is, what is the joy of finding something like that you have lost? It looks like my spelling is wrong there. What is the joy of finding something you have lost? Um, imagine that. Person, place, or thing. Either one will work. So uh, we continue with this theme of repentance in Luke's gospel and how Jesus is instructing us or helping us to see that. Have a great week, and we'll talk to you next week.